Yo! Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you're new to our channel, I'm Arvin. I'm Jay. And we talk about fashion related stuff. Yeah, this month is February, and as we know, February is Black History Month. So we thought what we would do for this video is highlight some black creatives that we enjoy and are inspired by in the fashion industry. And we'll kind of just go through a list, talk about, I guess, brief history or brief facts about them. And yeah, let's get into it. We'll start off with Bianca Saunders. Um, she created her brand in 2017. It is a London-based brand. She mainly focuses on menswear. Um, it's really clean and elegant, and I believe she describes it as, describes her brand as confident, attractive, and comfortable. She draws from her West Indian and British background, using traditional British garments and kind of adding a modern twist to it within her collection. Yeah, you can see like a lot of like, it's like almost like a cinch effect on a lot of the clothing, trousers. We'll try and add pictures on the side mm -hmm. to like really show it, yeah. But that's definitely like one of her signature looks. It's just really clean and it looks really nice um, and it flows really well, yeah. Uh, second person I guess we'll talk about is uh, uh, Virgil. Obviously, you don't really need to introduce him. He's such a big figure in the fashion industry. Obviously, rest in peace as well, he recently passed. He's obviously the creative director of and founder of Off-White and as well as the artistic director for Louis Vuitton. He just had his last show. Yeah, Virgil played such a huge role in the fashion industry, especially breaking boundaries, putting, bringing streetwear into like high-end fashion. Mm -hmm. Obviously also breaking boundaries for the POC community, like being the first POC person to be the creative director of Louis Vuitton, which is like Basically a huge the, luxury brand. Yeah, like the number one in terms of like finances and corporate size brand in the world. I guess a little bit of background on Virgil. He studied architecture and I do find a lot of designers actually start study like architecture, like interior design, like Raft does as well. And it kind of translates into clothing, especially like playing with shapes and stuff like that. Virgil obviously started off with streetwear and a lot of like hoodies and sweats back in the day when he was doing Pyrex uh, with like Justin Saunders and Matthew Williams who runs Aleeks and Givenchy right now. Yeah, it definitely paved the way during like the early 2010s. I mean, yeah, he's such a big influence obviously in the industry and there's nothing more, much more we really have to touch on for Virgil. I guess bridging off from Virgil, we could talk about Kanye West. Also a huge influence in the fashion industry, a multi-talented artist, producer, designer. Just all around entertainment. Yeah. Kanye. Yeah, one of them. Kanye's Kanye. Yeah. He, just a little bit of background, he was, he did pastel in 2006, and then he had collaborations with Nike, Louis Vuitton, Fendi, and that's just a few of them. And then afterwards, in 2013, he b began collaborating with in 2013, he really began his collaboration with Adidas. Um, I believe it was just a shoe release in the beginning. And then after that, in 2015, Yeezy was born. And yeah, Yeezy the clothing line, and it's kind of trickled from there. I think Kanye in general, he is a huge influence, like not only in music, but also in the fashion industry. You can see that in so many ways. Um, wherever he goes, the cameras are always on him. He always knows how to like get people's attention. Um, and he basically, I guess, mentored Virgil and like Matthew Williams, Samuel Ross from A Cold Wall, like that group of people. And like now if you look at the fashion industry, a lot of them are creative directors at big houses and that's like a huge footprint in Kanye's influence as well. Yeah. Fourth person that we kind of want to talk about is I guess Shane Oliver and his brand Hood by Air. I'm currently wearing a Hood by Air shirt and this is probably like one of my favorite shirts. Hood by Air, obviously a New York based brand, started off in 2006. He was selling a bunch of t-shirts with friends. Um, Shane was obviously DJing in the New York scene and just kind of like selling t-shirts or whatever to friends and family and started his brand. 
also a huge pioneer in the streetwear scene. It was even before like Off-White and all that stuff. So definitely like one of the first, I guess, high-end streetwear yeah. brand, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it introduced a lot of kids, especially our age, into designer stuff. Mm -hmm. Like back in those days with the infrared print shirts and all that stuff. I remember like a lot of sites stocking them back in the day. And then now the, the brand kind of died off a couple of years. And then last year he brought Hood by Air back. I'm very excited to see. He honestly like showcases a lot of unique designs using like zipper details, different cuts. Like this button up for instance has like a elongated collar. So it kind of gives us like bunched up button up effect, which plays with the shapes that I really love. Yeah, that's pretty much about Shane. <laughs> and then we will move on to models. Well, just one model in specific, and that's Naomi Campbell. She, you guys probably know her. She is very iconic. She was one of the very first supermodels. When supermodels became even a thing, they became supermodels were celebrities um, in the 90s. She got signed by elite models at the time. Besides her beauty, her strong and powerful opinions are noteworthy. Even to this day, you could see that her images from like the 90s and back in the day are always circulating throughout social media and with the runway shows. Yeah, oftentimes like stylists use a lot of her runway looks that she was in as like inspiration and mood boards and stuff. And then next off, we'll go through a couple editors. First off, Andre Leon Talley, rest in peace to him as well, recently passed. He was obviously known, well, today he's really known for basically being Anna Wintour's right-hand man. She was the, he was the editor at large at Vogue magazine for a long period of time. He started off working for Diana Vreeland at the time and then was basically known for having immense fashion knowledge. Uh, I finished reading his a memoir or book and even there there's a lot of mentions of like deep fashion history and fashion knowledge from like the 60s 70s 80s you know definitely has played a huge role in the fashion industry was also was also like great friends with like people like Yves uh, Saint Laurent as well as like Karl Lagerfeld and like would write amazing interviews and articles about the designers and was honestly just everywhere in the fashion scene and plays a huge huge role and then obviously in the later days a lot of people know him from the interviews at the Met Gala that he does and and he just has such a positive influence and energy wherever he is um if you watch this documentary you could tell like he has that like southern hospitality like personality i guess um another editor that i want to quickly touch on is edward edinful he's currently the editor-in-chief for british vogue as well as the european editorial director for condé nast which is um the company that owns vogue yeah he's he's been really influential in terms of the editorial and magazine world he was a fashion director at id at the age of 18 and was there for 20 years which is like crazy like thinking as an 18 year old doing such a huge role, you know, paved the way for a lot of like other black creatives and putting a spotlight on black designers in his editorials and magazines as well. For stylist, we have Ed Kamara. He's currently the editor in chief of Days Magazine. He used to be with ID as a stylist for that magazine as well. He styles runways for Louis Vuitton, Comme des Garçons, etc. He won the Isabella Blow Prize for Fashion Creative last year. He's one of the most influential stylists in terms of incorporate his culture into his styling work. It's really, he has like this one style I feel like he works with, um, what's his name, Raphael? And those are, I find like the most iconic ones. For yeah, he uses a lot of his African inspiration because um, he grew up there before moving to London. So he definitely uses a lot of inspiration from his culture and background, especially like the uh, accessories that he uses. like. A lot of headpieces. Mm -hmm. I definitely have a lot of his like styling work saved in my collection for like inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely say like in today's fashion world, he's probably the biggest stylist or like I guess has like the most momentum, especially mm -hmm. right now. Like a lot of brands are starting to let him style runways. He obviously got the day's job a couple of years ago, and there's some rumors. Well, I don't think it's going to happen, but like some people are even saying that he might take over 
Virgil's position as career director at Louis Vuitton, but like there's like obviously I don't I don't think it's gonna happen, but like the, his name was mentioned and like people talk you know in the industry talking about who would take over um Virgil's role, so it'd be interesting to see what happens with that. Okay, so that concludes our video about the most influential black creatives in the fashion industry. Um, thank you guys for watching. As per usual, like, subscribe comment, all of that. And yeah, we'll see you guys next week and happy Black History Month.